Good evening, everybody. This is the Camera Artist Guild Thursday Image Critique, and I am your host, George Deloach. I'm a portrait artist and photographer's coach coming to you from Los Angeles, California, and I hope you have had a fabulous week. I'm glad to be back and meeting up with you again uh, on this Thursday. We've got some great images, and we're going to get into those in just a little bit. I do want to talk to you about a couple of things. I always try to bring a little bit of something, you know, be it uh, for the business or for the photography. And I uh, want to talk to you about developing a style. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of us like to have our unique style, and some styles develop. But you know, I find out that uh, a style is something that develops over time out of practice rather than something that you can force. One of the first things that you have to do is become truly familiar and educated with fine photography. Now, in the recent, in our recent years, we've done away with most of the, the uh, fine photography magazines and sources. When I was a kid growing up, there was Life Magazine, there was Look Magazine, Time, uh, there was National Geographic, and there was no internet. <laughs> Uh, there was only black and white TV. I'm really dating myself. But those magazines were just the, the, the thing and the ticket for photography. And we got a chance to observe some of the greatest photographers of all time were tied up into, uh, tied up in, into photographing those images. And we got to be visually literate. We could look at a photograph and know whether it was good or not. And now over the period of time, especially, you know, here today, there's so many people that are taking snapshots on their phones and there's Instagram and there's TikTok and there's Snapchat and there's all of these other different forms where people take pictures of their food, take snapshots of themselves, and they're not well composed, they're not well lit, they're not well uh, exposed, and yet people have become accustomed to that kind of art. So in order to set yourself apart from the ordinary type of photographer, you're going to have to, first of all, feed yourself with nothing but the best art. You're going to have to feed yourself with photography from the great masters, from painting from the great masters. Uh, you are, uh, I have my own personal heroes. Uh, Joseph Karsh is one, Arnold Newman is another one. Uh, there is a photographer by the name of Horsh P. Horsh that was another great photographer, and they made images that were phenomenal. George Harrell, uh, and, or uh, I think it's that Arnold Newman. Uh, their images live on today you know, in, in history as some of the greatest images ever produced. Now we have modern day people like uh, Selinger and uh, Annie Leibovitz does a phenomenal job. Uh, Joe McNally, they uh, all create great images, fine images that really turn you on, stuff that you would love to do, and then go through a process called deconstruction. And you should be deconstructing images all the time. It'll become, it'll come almost automatic. You'll look at it and you'll say, now, how do they do that? And after you become good at deconstruction, you'll be able to look at the light and see the pattern of the light. You'll be able to see how they compose the image where they place their subjects in the image, where they, how they handle the background, how they handle the image, how they handle the foreground, if there was any foreground, and how the entire image was assembled. And as you become good at uh, deconstruction, then the next process is visualization. And that is when you decide that you're going to create an image, you need to visualize that image in your mind's eye until that image is already complete. I like to say that the image is taken long before you pick up the camera. You have already created the image in your mind. Now the only uh, 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 challenge is to take the medium of photography and manipulate all of the different things that we have in our image in order to create the image that you envisioned in your mind. And now the frustration comes when your ability at the mastery of photography really kind of stands as an impediment to creating the image that you visualize. But then that's where the work comes in and you need to practice and practice and you'll fall short. I have fallen short time and time again. I've spent hours in the studio and I have set up the remote control 
And I put myself in the position because nobody's going to sit there as long as, as you'd like. I put myself in the position of the subject and I played with lighting. I played with the positioning and I photographed myself and then I go look at it. And I photographed myself and I go look at it. And slowly you begin to craft the image so that everything is in the right position. Then you bring in the talent and you plug the talent into it and you create the image. And after you've done that enough time, you will find things that are really attracted, that you are really attracted to and uh, lighting patterns and uh, lens choices. There are things that, that you just, you will like. And out of that evolves a style. Now, I can see a lot of your styles uh, developing. And uh, matter of fact, we, we uh, have a lot of them today and I'll, I'll point out some of the stuff. And I can look at those images usually and tell who created them. So hope that helped out a little bit. It is a challenge to be at it, but you keep working at it and you get good. Let's uh, get on over to the images. Okay, the first image is by John, Johnny Bauer. And John, you, you always, uh, you now you've got a distinctive style that's evolving where you like putting the light, the sunlight, at low camera, low angle, so it's afternoon, late afternoon, approaching golden hour. But you like to put that light behind the subject and then shoot into that light. And it's an interesting style. Uh, there are several people that have uh, worked at it. One of the people that uh, that's done a little bit of it is Joel Grime. Uh, there are a couple others out there. Uh, this, is a, this is the beginnings of a really cool image. Now, there's a couple of things you have to remember. Uh, when you let the light source, the sun, come through the subject here where it's coming through the hand. Now that may be intentional because that's the way you look at it. But what that will do, now if you want to do this and if it's something that you've chosen to do, then good enough. It's, it's not up to me to say, you know, what's good or bad. But I just want to point out something. When that light comes through there, it flares the lens. It goes into the lens, it travels across the surface of the lens, and it degrades the image as far as contrast and saturation in and around the area near the lens. And because it's a bright light and very bright and is flaring into the, the hand and the body and upper torso, your, your eye gets drawn there. Where I would believe that you would want your the eye of the viewer to be right up here at the subject. Now, the subject is, you know, it's, it's pretty neat. I think that you could move that camera position just a little bit uh, over and let that light, and keep the same lighting pattern behind, but let that light not come through the, the, uh, the arm right here, but actually be blocked off by the arm. Hold, hold the, uh, the left arm out so you would get a shape in the upper torso of the body but you wouldn't get that flare coming through the lens because the body itself would be would be blocking the direct light. And then you're using your artificial light. Maybe your composition would be a little stronger if you took the uh, image from right bullseye dead center and moved it a little bit off to the third, brought a little more basketball net in there. Uh, I think that would, that would strengthen it. Uh, and I would, Put, and I understand you're trying to show height. You know, that's admirable. One of the best ways to do that from this position, if you're gonna take a low position like that, is a shift, <laughs> shift tilt lens. Uh, uh, I have one that's a Nikon lens. It happens to be an older one uh, and it's manual, but the lens elements, front elements, actually shift and what that does is that changes the perspective. You have the same height, but you bring the feet and uh, the head back together so that the feet don't look uh, so huge and the head looks so small. Uh, yet you still have the same height uh, relationship. Uh, so that's, that's, you know, that's maybe a radical decision, but uh, it's a lens that you'll use periodically. You could do that uh, in Photoshop, you can do some stuff with transform, with the transform tool to bring that together. Or you can raise that camera angle till it's about waist high and try at that or 
move farther off the subject to the back and use a longer lens. Now, I don't know what, uh, what length lens you were using at the time, but uh, maybe you back off and use a 200 and then you could keep the same height, uh, but the distortion wouldn't be quite as radical. But uh, it's still a great image. I really like it uh, I, and I like your style. I can still remember the lady on the, the bench alongside the ocean with the sun uh, behind her hat and everything, which made for a very nice looking image. So uh, just keep it up, man. Keep it up, you you definitely have a style developing. I can tell your image the minute it comes up. Okay, Keith Davis. Now Keith, uh, you, Keith runs a lot of different things, does a lot of different things. And so his style is all over, but this is unusual for you to move into this area. I actually think this one, this one really calls for uh, at least a reflector, if not a secondary light source and available light source. Like uh, I would use a large uh, shoot through umbrella if I could get away with it, uh, like a Paul Buff or a soft lighter, uh, something like that. And uh, I wouldn't put enough light through it that you could really tell but I'd raise her exposure up a little bit more. Now, two things would happen when you do that. You could darken the background down a little bit by dragging the shutter, that is uh, increasing the shutter speed, uh, and then adding the light on the front end, which would still keep this beautiful rim light that you're getting from the sun. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's a couple of things you can do. Just kind of balance that light out there a little bit more. Okay. Al Cabrera, Al, you are outstanding. And again, your style has really come up. Uh, I love the way you are doing everything. I, I understand the wide angle. I don't know whether I would use that wide angle of lens if I could get back a little bit farther. Uh, you've got some keyholing happening here uh, with the church and uh, well, not keyholing, but perspective the church leans into the center of the image rather than being straight up, uh, straightened up. So you could probably get away with doing some uh, retouching to it. Uh, your lighting and your position on the model is very nice. All in all, it's a great image. Uh, but you always do good stuff, man. You always do. And sometimes I struggle to try to figure things out that I can help you move up to the next level. But uh, one thing that also might help, just think about it, uh, using a grid on your light source, which would focus the light up here on the model, but it would taper off some into the hand region. So this hand wouldn't be so bright in a predominant portion of the image. It would just, uh, and the dress itself would not have uh, all of the light on it. So it, it just means using a grid and uh, positioning it a little bit, but wow, I, I even like the exposure and that's a gift to get that street light on and it be the, the proper brightness to fit in with the overall scene and not be uh, out of exposure. But everything from the backlighting of the sun, uh, the street light, the, uh, the model, yeah, good stuff, Al. Okay, now Willie, you done, you done done it this time, man. You got another great image. I like the fact that you guys are challenging the sunlight now. You didn't, you were able to get the sun low enough and behind some of the tree that it didn't flare your model. You dropped your model in on the one third compositional line and you decided to go available light. If you could in post-production, I might tone this down a little bit so that the model ends up being the brightest portion of the image. But uh, your composition is strong, your pose is strong, your model, you know, another beautiful model. Uh, all in all, great image. Uh, just keep it up. Uh, this is Scott from Nigeria, and this is a recreation, but it, it's a very powerful image. I like the fact that it's in black and white, even though it, this is a recreation. Uh, maybe I wouldn't crop the head off quite so tight on the top. I'd leave a little more room there on the upper end of the image, but uh, you dropped him in 
on the one third compositional line, maybe just a little bit more to the left. All in all, it's uh, it's a very powerful image. And so uh, I like it a lot and congratulations on it. Uh, just keep coming. Uh, all of you guys uh, from uh, the, uh, both from India and from Africa, your, your images are coming along really good and I'm glad to see you. Uh, I hope you keep sending images in. And uh, well, that's it. That's the five for this week. It is great to have you and great to be here. And I will see you all again next week.